Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Gonna do a little stick wheel today. I'll show you how to get your machine set up. Hopefully, you already have a machine. If you don't, that's gonna be that's a problem. Uh, you're gonna need a ground and a stinger. That's all you need. Stinger or electrode holder, whatever you want to call it. I call it a stinger. Ground goes in the negative side of the machine. There's a there'll be a symbol. There'll be a negative on one and a positive on the other. So in mine, the left is the negative. Ground goes in there. Stinger goes in the positive when you're stick welding. Put the machine on. This is the Omni 220, uh, Omni, 2, Omni Pro 220 uh, Vulcan, by the way. I just got it a few months ago and I'm uh, pretty darn pleased with it. It's a multi process machine. You can do uh, stick TIG or uh, MIG. And uh, I wanted to be able to do all three at home uh, so I can do pretty much anything I want. And I even got the spool gun to uh, weld aluminum with it. So that's pretty neat. Anyway, if you want to know more about this machine, I can uh, do a video really breaking it down and showing you all about it if you want. But anyway, uh, so you just go to the home home screen here and you go through, scroll through your options till you find stick. And then you choose stick and the rods you're using. Uh, this says 60XX, that's for the 60 series, 6010, 6011, 6013, whatever, or 70s, like uh, 7018. Uh, and that's what we're gonna be using here. Uh, if, you're, if you're learning, I highly recommend learning with uh, size 332, uh, 7018. Uh, I definitely recommend learning that first before you move on to different types, like in, in the 60 series. That's all there is for setup, except for the, uh, make sure whatever metal you're welding on, make sure you ground it good. Grind you a, a clean spot on the metal and put your ground on it so you get a really good connection. Let's get welding. Let me get my sleeves on here. So if you're a beginner, you probably don't know really how to set your machine. Even though somebody says, okay, you need to set it at 90 amps, well, okay, that's a good starting point, but that, that's not always uh, exact, okay? So, the thing is, different machines run different. Some might run hotter, some might run colder. I, I've burned uh, on one machine in particular, I remember I was running 332 7018s on it, and 90 was smoking hot. So I had to turn it down. I remember it was right around 75 amps. Uh, it burned great but just about every other machine I've ran, uh, right around 90 is, is good. <clears throat> so, being a beginner, you don't know really, you can't really tell yet whether your machine is too hot or too cold. Okay, it takes a little time, a little practice to learn how the metal flows and how, how the puddle reacts and, and how it should flow. Uh, so, at first, I'm gonna show you an easy way to set your machine, okay, without using numbers. Go ahead and set your machine to 90, okay, with 332, 7018. Set your machine to 90 amps, and, uh, and I wanna show you. You take a rod, you're gonna take a rod, you're gonna bend it back, and, and bend it around like that, okay? And all this, all this flux is gonna chip off here, and you burn that whole rod all the way up to here, and this, by the time you get there, this here should be cherry red, okay, bright red. Okay, if it's not getting red, then then turn it up. Turn it up in, in five, in increments of five to 10 amps, okay, until this gets cherry red, okay. That's a good setting for if, if you're burning pretty, pretty thick stuff, um, you know, at least a quarter inch thick or thicker. Um, but uh, you can always, you know, turn it down from there. But that gives you a good idea. That, that tells you you're, you're pretty close to where you need to be. Now, if you're welding thinner stuff, you're gonna to wanna to turn it down probably 10 amps or so, depending on how thin you're, you're welding. But anyway, that's a good starting point. I'll show you what I mean. So if you don't know already, to strike an arc, 
<clears throat> this is what you want to do. You want to do just a real quick little scratch, almost like a, almost like a, using a turkey call, a slate call. If you turkey hunt out of anyway, <laughs> so you want to do just a little quick scratch. You scratch it. Don't stop the motion. Scratch it and pick up, and be you know a little at least a quarter inch from it or so. And then you want to go slowly back to where you're going to start. Okay. Okay. So you scratch and then move into where you want to start. And then once the puddle starts forming, get your puddle going and then you start going. Okay. And the 70, 70-18s, you can just drag it. And uh, you, you can go straight up if you want to. You, you really need to be angled toward the direction you're going. Drag it, not like this, not pushing, if you can help it. Um, so anyway, that's it. You scratch the arc and uh, get to where you want to start, form your puddle, and then start going. And I like to, I like to do a little, a little, little back and forth motion. But uh, you can just drag it straight if you want with these. I'm off. That's what I'm talking about. That's it right there. Okay, now I already know, I had to turn my machine up to 110 amps for it to do that. Uh, my machine burns a little colder than I'm used to, but no big deal, if you know how to turn it up, you can set, set your machine no matter, no matter what the numbers say, okay? So that's a little trick I was taught by the old timers, old timers that taught me, and uh, it really helps uh, in the beginning because, like I said, you're a beginner, you don't, you don't have a clue how to set your machine, really. And on thin stuff, you're gonna to wanna to turn it down, like I said, because thin stuff's gonna get real hot, it can't hold the heat. And this right here is pretty thin. Uh, this is about 3 16 of an inch thick, so I'm gonna turn it, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it down. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it down to about 90, because I just, I've welded with this machine before, I already know how to set it up, so I'm gonna go ahead and knock it down to 90, and uh, we'll carry on. So as a beginner, okay, if you use this whole rod, okay, the, the problem is it's real, I'm just barely moving it there. And that thing, like, I'm barely moving my hand. And at the end, it's shaking like crazy, okay? That's, you don't want that, okay? So let's shorten that rod up. Take about three inches off of it, okay? You wanna chip that, chip the slag off. Chip the slag off, flux. Chip the flux off, wiggle it around in there, make sure you're getting a good connection in there so it'll fire up, okay? So that will make it a lot more, a lot more stable. It's not nearly as shaky anymore. So that'll help you, help you with your stability. Also, you wanna get comfortable. You wanna get loose, okay? Okay, you, want, you don't wanna, you can't be like this or like this or, you, it's gonna look crazy, okay? You want something to prop up on, okay? I'm gonna angle my rod down a little bit. It makes it easier. Whatever makes it easiest for you, okay? You wanna get as comfortable as possible, okay? Uh, to be honest with you, your, your weld's already gonna suck. I'm sorry. You're, if you're learning, it's just, it's, it is, okay? Everybody goes through it. It just takes a little patience, okay? And some good teaching. I got you covered. Okay. All right. So we're gonna strike up, do some weld. So I've already got some beads here that I ran earlier, goofing off. This is the one I just ran. So I'm gonna fire up. I'm gonna fire up right here, and I'm gonna back drag. That's called back dragging. Fire up ahead of where you're starting. You fire up and back drag to where you want to start, and then you make like a little little circle or whatever. Get your for puddle formed, and then you want to you want to hold that rod right at the edge of this bead that you that's already there, and that puddle will will flow over onto this one, close to halfway. You want it about halfway. Stack them tight, okay? You don't want to do it over here, because if you do that, you're going to have like a little hump, a little valley in between them. You don't want that. You want them stacked nice and tight. 
Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna run a bead right beside this one. All right, here we go. They form their puddle. And I'm trying to go right along the edge. I hope you can see this. This is the one I just ran. Now you can use you can use a chipping hammer if you want. It comes off pretty easy, but uh, came off pretty easy. That didn't turn out too bad. It's all tied in the edge, but I like to clean it up really good with the old uh, with the old wire wheel. Definitely watch your eyes. <clears throat> put some kind of shield on. Put your welding hood on whatever cover up your face and neck when you use one of these okay because those wires will fly out of there and i've had them stuck in my legs and arms before but i always always use some kind of face shield okay it's, it's dangerous you don't want one of those stuck in your eye for sure they're really nice for cleaning up your welds you can really see how terrible they look. <laughs> but uh, anyway, it turned out pretty decent. Now that's what you want to do. You want it to tie in really good. You don't want a valley. You know what, I'm, I'm gonna run another one right beside it so you'll know what I'm talking about with a valley. All right, here we go. Eyeballs. I'm gonna run one. Kind of beside it here. I'm not really tying to it well. At all, really. All right, let's clean it up. See how horrible it looks. there's actually a, a valley right there you can't really tell a whole lot on camera but but there's a valley right there you don't want that okay see how my rod falls down into it you don't want that you want it to be flat when you tie beads together like I did here you want to tie them in tight make them nice and flat okay you don't want a valley in between them that could cause you a low spot and if you, your valley gets too big, you can trap slag in there. So I really hope you got something out of this video. Uh, if you liked it, please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Give me something. Comment. Ask any questions you got. I'll help you out any way I can. Keep watching. I'm really going to turn this channel into just welding. I'm going to teach you, you know, more, uh, a lot more on stick welding, TIG welding, MIG welding, all three processes. So thanks again. Thanks for watching. That's it for today, folks. Keep watching for more welding videos coming up.